Right, hello everybody, my name is Ataka, I'm from Queen Mary University of London. So today I would like to present my research title Model-Based Post-Control of Inflatable Version Robot with Variable Stiffness. So I would like to start by showing you some videos of soft robots in the literature. So one example here is the stiff flop robot that is created from uh, flexible silicon materials. Uh, and it is mainly designed for uh, minimally invasive surgery. So this type of robot, due to the flexibility, is very useful to be used in a tight space in a surgical environment because it can bend in three-dimensional uh, three space like is shown in this video here. Other examples of soft robotics in the literature include the op arm manipulator uh, and also the Festos Bionic Handling Assistant that is currently also being used in industrial applications. So there are a couple of more uh, soft robotics in the literature. It, it's quite a lot. However, most of this robot actually has problem in terms of its payload because of the stiffness of the robotic uh, material that is being used. So it has very limited payload compared to the rigid link robots. On the other hand, it's also uh, uh, it's always soft. Uh, in the sense that it cannot actually change the stiffness of the robot body uh, to produce more force to interact with the environment, for example. So motivated by this problem, some of the researcher in the last couple of years uh, actually developed soft robot that is not only soft, but can also control the stiffness of the robot. So example here is a robot developed by Agustino Stili from King's College London. So using the antagonistic principle, it actually can create the robot that is not only controllable in terms of its position, but also in terms of its stiffness using combination of pressure and tension of tendons. Another uh, research that is also looking at this direction is the, the work of uh, Professor Kamura from Stanford that is actually also using uh, the, the similar principle. So it's using combination between the main chamber pressures here that is going into this tube and also the pressure that is going into these pouches to create the bending. Right, however, uh, this creates also a new problem because now we need to control not only the pose of the robot but also the stiffness. And this is actually the main problem that we're trying to solve in this paper. So in this paper, we're gonna use this uh, inflatable eversion robot that, is, that we developed in our lab at Queen Mary. It's actually based on fabric. So as you can see here, the robot has three different segments. So one here and one there and one over there. And this segment is completely independent of each other. So we can control the bending by sending pressure to the pouch of each segment. All right, apart from that, uh, this robot is actually also, we can control also the stiffness by uh, tuning or changing or modifying the pressure that goes into the main chamber of the robot. Right, so now we're going to start with the uh, bending model of the robot. So as we can see here, uh, the robot's actuator is uh, actually consists of set of pouches that is integrated in the main body of the robot. So this is the pouches in the deflated states. When we inflate these pouches, there will be a contraction and due to this contraction, because there is different in length between this side and this side of the robot, we can actually create this bending movement. Right, so as you can see here, the bending angle will, all, will, all, will be affected by mainly by two things. So first of all, obviously it will be affected by the pressure sent to the pouches, which is PI here. Uh, so the more the pressure to the pouches, uh, actually the more also the bending angle. However, it's also be affected by the main chamber pressure that goes into the main robot body, which is P0 here. Uh, because the more the pressure, the stiffer the robot becomes and more difficult the robot to be bent. So we also have several assumptions here. First of all, we assume that the tension produced by these pouches is actually proportional to the pressure. And also we assume that its section of the robot will behave like a constant curvature. Uh, so meaning that the curvature will be actually proportional to the bending moment. So K proportional to the M or bending moment. Right, so not only that, but also now we also take into account the effect of internal pressure to the stiffness of the robot body. So this is actually our main contribution here. So as you can see here, the young modulus E that characterize the rigidity of the robot structure will also be affected by the by the force P, which is proportional to the main chamber inflation pressure P0 here. 
right? So if we simplify this equation, it will be something like this. So the, the, the robot's bending angle theta will be affected by uh, the pulse pressure P and the main chamber pressure P0. So what we need to do is we simply need to find these two constant, C1 and C2, from the experiment to get this bending model. So remember, C1 and C2 are the parameters that we're trying to estimate from the experimental data. Right, after transforming the actuator space, which is pressure into the configuration space, which is bending angle, uh, we need one more transformation to transform this bending angle into the task space, which consists of uh, uh, the tips, position, and orientation. And we're gonna use the, the assumption of constant curvature. So from the geometry, we can derive this task space mapping from the configuration space parameters. Right, so now we are gonna start with uh, the modeling results. So we send the pressure to the main chamber of the robot and to the pouches and we modify these two parameters to get variation of bending angle. And we record the data using the Kinect RGBD camera on top of the robot body. And then from this data, we can actually estimate the two parameters that characterize the bending angle, which is C1 and C2 for every segment of the robot. So we are using uh, uh, least square optimization to estimate these parameters using the experimental data. And as you can see here in the first plot, we can estimate the bending angle, which is shown in the dashed line, compared to the real bending angle that is produced by the robot. Uh, and also we can estimate the position of the tips of the robot in X and Y, compared to the real position of the tip of the robot. Right, next, after getting this model, we actually use this model to develop the Jacobian of the robot and we use the inverse Jacobian technique to control the position and orientation of the robot. So for example, here, we, we, we define, the user will define the target position and target orientation, also target trajectory that the robot needs to follow. Not only that, but also the user can specify the stiffness of the robot by uh, modifying this P0, which is the main chamber pressure. So for example, the, robot can make, uh, the user can make the robot follow the same trajectory and modifying the stiffness accordingly, according to the user's need. So the robot can be very soft, can be very stiff, and it will still follow the same trajectory. So this is some example of the uh, simulation result here. So we can see here the position of the robot will go to the desired position and also so does the orientation of the robot. So this is still the case despite we change the, the main chamber pressure shown as a red here. So despite changing the P0, uh, this tracking will still be achieved. So I'm going to show you uh, videos of the experimental results that we get in the paper. So first of all, we are going to try to make the robot follow the trajectory without obstruction or without obstacle. So here we can see that the, so in this video, it's the, the speed is multiple uh, uh, twice, so uh, two times faster. So we can see here the robot try to follow this trajectory, which is actually uh, uh, close to a straight line trajectory. Uh, and the robot is able to consistently follow this trajectory according to, that is basically uh, set or defined by the user. Right, not only that, but now we can actually control the trajectory of the robot along with controlling the, the stiffness of the robot. So for example, here we start with a low stiffness level using 0.3 bar as the internal pressure. And, and to demonstrate the stiffness capability, we put the object here. And as you can see here, because the robot is in low stiffness, it has low force capability. So it, is, it has a safer contact with the environment. However, it, it is enabled to follow the path due to the obstruction. So the, the path is supposed to be a straight line uh, going to the left and going back to the right as shown in this current video here. So without obstruction, the robot can easily follow the trajectory. But with obstruction, if the robot's stiffness is too low, uh, it will have problem following the trajectory of the robot. Right, and then secondly, now we increase the stiffness of the robot by increasing the, 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 the main chamber pressure to 0 0.7 bar. And now the, pro, the robot is able to produce more force. So it is able to follow a trajectory. It's able to push the obstruction, obstruction away from its path. Right, so the conclusion is using the control approach, we are able to control the post of the inflatable inversion robot 
under various stiffness conditions. So in the future, we're going to learn, we're going to try more advanced models. We're going to also try a different control algorithm. We're going to study the interaction with the environment. And we're going to also use sensor to improve the post estimation of the robot. Thank you very much.